Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about the intelligence in the human body, something that constantly reassures us of this innate intelligence that we have in our body to help us to heal. It helps us to prevent the onset of disease. When we have an injury, it helps us to recover. What we're talking about is something called homeostasis. Now, homeostasis is a fancy word, but if we want to make it simple, we just call it equilibrium. You know, it's the ability of the human body to adapt. So for example, you walk out of a hot room into a cold room. Immediately, the temperature in your body will change. Your body will perform certain functions to immediately adapt you to the new environment. You see, there are constant, there's constant activity happening in the human body that maintains homeostasis. What we need to understand is while we're busy working through the day, thinking, doing different things, there's a function that's keeping you alive in your body. So there's the pH function that maintains the pH of your blood, your urine, in a way that enables you to survive and to live life. Then you have your blood pressure. Your blood pressure is constantly changing, but your body, the ability of your body to maintain the right blood pressure for your heart to function, for blood to reach all the trillion cells in your human body. That intelligence, again, homeostasis. So we go into a stressful situation, our BP rises, our BP comes back down. Your body is doing this for you to adapt to a situation and then bring you back to a normal environment and a normal situation. Then we have hormones. Hormones constantly maintain and allow our body to resume equilibrium. So when we're, for example, we have a glass of fruit juice, which is the worst thing that anyone can do. It raises our blood sugar levels, our blood sugar levels rise, our pancreas produce insulin, the insulin lowers our blood sugar levels and we're back to normal. That's another example of homeostasis. Basically, the best way to understand what homeostasis is and why do we need to understand this? To remind ourselves that we have an intelligence in our body that is designed to heal us and to prevent the onset of disease. Does this mean we don't need medication? Does this mean we don't need doctors and all of that stuff? Absolutely not. We need that at the right time for the right event. But we wanna talk about how you can harness what you already have inside of you to heal and to prevent. Climate has the biggest impact on homeostasis of the body, your body temperature. So for example, right now, if your body heats up, you're in a very hot environment or you're exercising and your body heats up, your blood vessels under your skin will basically dilate to dissipate heat. You will start to sweat because the sweat cools down our body. The water evaporates from our skin, providing a cooling effect. And once the heat is dissipated, our body is able to come back down to that normal temperature and all the normal functioning of your body continues. Now, for example, if you move into a cold climate or you're, you're, you're in a room which is extremely, extremely cold, what your body is going to do is something completely the opposite. Your blood vessels beneath your skin will actually start constricting. This will help us to conserve body heat. You may start shivering. Shivering is not a bad symptom. Shivering are your muscles basically moving very, very quickly because it produces heat in your body. When you shiver, it's your body's way of producing heat in the body. So you see all these little things which are happening, which we may think are symptoms, is your body's natural intelligence to resume you back to normalcy. So when we really look at these things, then we start understanding that, you know, every symptom is not a bad symptom. You know, sometimes you have this mucus discharge, your child has a little bit of mucus coming out of their noses, you do it, and immediately we look for over-the-counter drugs to stop the mucus, or we use nasal sprays to dry up the mucus. That's the worst thing that you can do, because what does the mucus coming out of your nose contain? It contains dead viruses, it contains dead bacteria, it contains dead germs that your body's immune system has killed and is now flushing out of your system. So that's a symptom which is good for us. Now, sometimes if there's too much of mucus and stuff like that, you, of course, will need medical intervention. But the understanding that I'm trying to get into you is to understand that everything is not bad. It is something called homeostasis happening in your body, where your body's throwing out all these dead viruses so it can resume to its natural and normal health. Equilibrium. The same thing with a fever. When your body raises its temperature, it is trying to kill certain pathogens germs and bacteria that cannot survive at a particular temperature in your body. So your own body raises its temperature to basically kill this. 
Now we shouldn't confuse this and ignore symptoms because sometimes it could be dengue, it could be malaria and stuff like that. But what we're trying to understand that all fevers are not bad fevers. Sometimes you've got to let a fever run its entire course. Of course, it reaches 104, you want to intervene. But if you see in the olden days and stuff like that, certain fevers were allowed to run because that actually improves the immunity of the entire human system. Vomiting, when you vomit, your body's trying to throw out something. It could be a stomach bug, it could be a toxin, it could be something that you ate. When you're nauseous, your body produces nausea to basically stimulate you to vomit your food. When you have diarrhea because you've eaten bad food, your body's trying to throw out the stomach bug through your rectum. And if we try to use quick fixes to stop this, we only keep that germ or that bacteria inside of us, compromising our immune system and making it weaker and weaker. So we should always make an informed decision and we can do that when we live mindfully and we're able to introspect. Okay, I had a bad meal outside last night. It's a stomach bug. These are the symptoms. Let me try to run it. Of course, you have a flight to catch or something like that. You may need the crutch of a medicine. But what we're trying to do is, the more we try to interfere with homeostasis, the more problems we create in our system. So when your body's trying to do the right thing at the right time, and if we come in with all of our methods to compromise it, we're actually compromising the immune system. And what happens is we weaken our entire immune structure that we have in our system. So coming back to climate, climate impacts all of us our immune system, our homeostasis and everything, which is why different climates in different countries, uh, you have different foods, which is why it is so important to eat local. In cold countries, the people over there will have high fat diets because you need more fat to maintain temperature of your internal body environment when you're living in a cold environment, which is why some of you who travel to Switzerland or cold countries, automatically you'll find that you start craving cheese, you start create, craving fatty foods. That's your body. It is telling you what is right for you. And at that point, if you try to do the opposite because you're trying to lose weight and all of that stuff, you only create more metabolic disturbance in your body because your body's trying to do what it needs to do for survival, but you're trying to do something the complete opposite with your very little intelligence compared to this much of intelligence in the human body. And sometimes when you're in a warm country, you find that you want to eat only cooling foods, just fruits. If you're not vegan, you tend to eat yogurts, very light foods, but yet we force our children to eat full meals and complete meals during summer. Whereas their body instinct is telling them, eat light foods because I'm trying to maintain the temperature in my system. When you look at Ayurveda, which is a beautiful form of science, you know, when the body heat is too much, they will remove you from foods that create heat in the body. Because by doing that, they allow the intelligence of the body to resume equilibrium. Which means when the body reduce, re resumes equilibrium, it can basically do the healing job and the prevention job far better than you or any doctor, nutritionist, scientist can ever tell you what to do. Your body's intelligence takes over. That's why it's so important to eat the foods which are local to you. You may not be able to do that 100%, but do, at least do it 80%. Because the fruits, the vegetables, the legumes, the stuff that grows at every season of the year in your country is exactly what your body needs. There's a huge connection between your geography that you live in and the internal environment in your body. Now, how, what are the quickest ways to maintain homeostasis? Which means our bodies will constantly adapt to toxins in the air, pollution, bad food, bad lifestyle, lack of sleep. But if it keeps happening, we move our body out of that set point and that's when disease comes into our system. Chronic diseases, which are very, very difficult to reverse because we've pushed our body out of that set point. And homeostasis is now challenged and it struggles to bring back normalcy to the human body. Take for example, you have a can of aerated drinks right now, or you consume a little bit too much of alcohol, or you smoke a cigarette. You're putting toxins in your body. That's not natural to the human body. That may seem normal to your conscious mind, but it goes into your body and immediately your body's thrown out of whack and now it tries to do everything it can to come back to equilibrium, to come back to homeostasis. So your liver has to start putting out more enzymes, your kidney has to work harder to push out those toxins which were never meant to be in your body. So when we constantly do these things, we upset the natural rhythm of the human body. And that's when disease starts creeping into our system, which is why it is so important for us to enable our body to resume homeostasis and equilibrium. Now, what are the four things that our body requires to maintain this natural intelligence or to harness it? Number one, the food that you eat. Okay, your conscious mind may tell you 
go on a fat diet, cut out your macronutrients and do all of, your st all of that stuff. But your cells in the body sees this as a huge stress because it needs what it needs for survival and homeostasis. But you're cutting it out because you're following a fat diet. That's the biggest issue. So it comes, the first thing is the food that you eat. Are you able to feed your trillion cells the right amount of food, the quality of food at the right time for your body to maintain homeostasis? The second thing is your activity. When you're too sedentary, your body finds it very difficult to achieve equilibrium. So you need more activity. It could be a walk, dance, yoga, whatever it is that your unique body requires. Everyone's body is different. So we need more activity for homeostasis to happen the right way. Then you have your sleep. This is the most important factor. Your body is able to resume its normal functioning when it is, a, when it is in a state of deep relaxation, which is why sleep is your miracle drug. No matter what anyone tells you, what technology tells you, what the most successful person in the world tells you, your body needs sleep to resume homeostasis and equilibrium, which is why when you're sick, you feel tired. You need to rest. Your body's natural instinct is to rest. The rules that society has made to define how we have to live, okay, may be required to live this life that we have to, but the rules that society make are exactly opposite than the rules of the human body, the things that the human body requires. So you may have a boss telling you work hard, work 18 hours, sacrifice your sleep and you will grow and you'll become a CEO and you'll have wealth but your body's telling you the opposite. Now, which one will you listen to? Some people get both, some people lose everything. So we need to understand that the rules that society define are the rules that society defines. The rules that your body needs to function is what you need to take responsibility and accountability for. So number one, the nutrition that your body needs, not what the world thinks you need, not what your friends think you need, not what you think you need because your friends are doing it. It's what your body needs, the right amount of activity, the right quantity and quality of sleep every night to enable your hormones to function better, your cells to rejuvenate, grow, repair, detoxify, all that magic happens while you sleep. And finally, stress is like a toxin. Too much of stress and your body moves out of equilibrium and it struggles to get back. If you have a lot of stress in your life, that's fine. But do you have enough of me mechanisms in your life to manage that? Are you meditating? Are you deep breathing? Are you doing your pranayama? Are you working out? Are you doing things which you can actually manage your stress better? Stress management is not about getting rid of your problems. It's about changing you and adding mechanisms in your life so that the stress that you have in your life no longer affects you to the level where it's removing you out of equilibrium and challenging every organ in your body and trillions of cells. So it all comes down to the four basic pillars the right nutrition for you, the right amount of activity for you, the right quality and quantity of sleep, and maintaining your emotional state of mind and your heart. You put this together and you harness the intelligence of your body. That's all you have to do. We don't need anything more than that unless we have a complicated disease and stuff like that, or we met with an accident. Your body's intelligence will take over. And then we move from being health obsessed fanatically obsessed about health, to living a simple life and trusting that our bodies will do the right thing at the right time to look after our own health. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.